get the mic. Yeah, I'll, Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll start and Mike will finish. So thank you everyone for being here. We appreciate your time and what a great story to follow. Twine looks like a very successful startup and uh, we're here to help all startups trying to be successful and help them grow. Uh, this is day number 10 for Targeted Velocity. Mike and I are both principals. We started this the first of the year and the response to our launch has been overwhelming. We've been slammed every day with uh, companies and venture capitalists in addressing how we could help them. And the area that we really are focused on is finding a different way to help companies grow in these very challenging times, whether it's the very uncertain economic climate we're all in today or diminishing VC funds, or just some of the same challenges that all VCs face with um, whether it is the choosing who do you partner with or some of the decisions you make is some of the challenges out there. And so we have found a way, a new journey that's been market proven, one that I've been working on since 2016 that has been very successful in helping uh, tech startups. So we're focused on future work tech startups and I'll hand it over to Mike. Hi everyone, nice to meet y'all. Uh... I, as Bob actually uh, did a little bit of an introduction, I'll do some as well. I think Bob actually knows uh, some of you. I think he's attended one or two of these calls, uh, but I haven't. Um, before uh, I joined uh, and, and uh, helped co-found Targeted Velocity, I was a partner at PwC, so I was prevented from doing an awful lot of things. Uh, and uh, <laughs> here I am. So yeah. what I actually saw in Bob's work was actually was something that I thought was not just a problem that needed to be solved, but it's a problem that could be, the, the solution is one that can be scaled. So the problem to be solved is really that a lot of companies really struggle with sharpening their product market fit and understanding the problem to be solved and understanding how to improve that pipeline and with quicker access to logos and with the uh, all the headwinds that are existing, it's become even more difficult for an early stage startup to, to find that sort of commercial success and get into those rhythms. Because let's face it, an early stage startup company is like a gawky teenager. They, they don't really move around so well. They're kind of a little bit off and they need a little bit of help. And so that's what we really, uh, we, we, we went around uh, with launching this was figuring out how to do this in a way, how to disrupt the advisory board approach that's being used by a lot of different startups in a way that helps actually introduce ways to improve that market product market fit, improve the pipeline, increase the market presence in sales. And that disruption, we think, can be done in a way that we can uh, apply a little bit of rigor and, and build something that can scale. And that's that's really what we're, we're trying to do. Terrific. So day 10. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, what, what do you see at the, the top of your list to do? Is it um, bringing in new customers? What do they look like, The pro, you know, these ideal prospects? What do they look like? Right, so our ideal client profile is going to be a startup that was probably funded from the first of 2022 to middle of the year. Companies that are realizing that their go-to-market plans are not working as well as they had hoped and well-intended. And they're looking now for new ways to do a slight pivot and to find new ways to gain market traction. So the very core of what we do is accelerate market presence traction that leads to partnering. And as I said, mentioned before, we've been the models, the work that I've done has proven to work very, very well for companies that are struggling to get their foot in the door as we come to technology. Nice. Well, that, and there, yeah, everybody needs that kind of uh, support. Um, and let's see if I can uh, assist with that. <laughs> so what, uh, you know, what do you see, where do you see your organization a year from now? And, you know, looking back, what do you see as the proud accomplishments and maybe what you'd uh, want to grow from there? That's a fabulous question. Thanks, Ward. I think the harder thing about it is is uh, really being disciplined and thoughtful about who to connect with, uh, how to how to make these kinds of relationships work. Because if you think about the, the type of business that we're in, we're really in the network business and we're in the trust business. 
And the network business is about connecting with the, with people and making making the network better as a whole. So part of that's actually connecting with groups like yours and other groups, making sure that there's there's value that's coming your way so that the value actually goes both ways. And when you start to to play in in that slightly different way, and when you start to actually operate in that different way, we believe that you can start to produce outcomes that are not zero sum games, which are a lot of the challenge that exists in the very early stage startups. They they go out of business at an alarming rate, and whether you want to say it's sixty percent or eighty percent or ninety percent, the numbers are all over the map. Uh, the research on that, but it's it's not good no matter what number you actually choose, and so. I would like to think in our own little way, we've made a little bit of a difference. And even if that 1%, 1% of 60% is a massive amount of, uh, of impact on capital, and it's a massive amount of impact on bringing value to ultimately the end users and the companies. Sounds good. Um, and Bob, way back when uh, you were in a formal alliances role with Kaplan, if you remember those days, um, mm. just curious, you know, um, Mike mentioned that you're looking at bringing together, you know, the, the players and helping connect the dots, I guess, is what I kind of heard from that. But from a, you know, biz dev and alliances perspective, how have things changed since Kaplan days? And, and certainly you've seen a lot, you know, with your own advisory work in the past six, seven years and whatnot. Yeah, but, certainly. So, yeah, yeah the, the my higher ed experience, 12 years, Kaplan, Bellevue, Laureate, all of the work really depended on what is core to us today, and that is relying upon affinity. Uh, and the affinity here are HR executive alumni are such a critical part in creating the kind of networks that we create today between solutions and enterprises today. And there's just some natural phenomena going on. And I think we've all experienced it where, and, and you, you know, just look at all the different affinity groups out there, ESA, I4CP, uh, Learning Forum, Executive Network. There's a reason why those are vendor excluded because of the trust of those individuals. And I've, like all of us, have been to so many conferences uh, I've come to realize and respect that when practitioners are going to these conferences, they're not there to meet me. I know that's a surprise or meet the solutions I'm working with. They're there to do one thing, and that is to meet up with their colleagues, other practitioners, to ask them one question. And that one question is, are you having the same challenge I am and how are you addressing it? And what Mike and I have tapped into is how to go and manage that that network, that peer-to-peer -peer trust that already exists in the market. And today, um, what first seemed as a really big challenge for the work that we do was, um, how, would he, how do we know that that market, that talent pool of HR executive alumni is a viable group, resource to tap into? Well, I think mm -hmm. we all know baby boomer HR executives are retiring at a very fast clip today and looking for something else to do. And so, as they say, right time, right place, we're there. And you mix that with the uncertainty and the economic climate and the challenges that startups have. And we feel very good about what we have brought together as a very cohesive solution to help startups, right, accelerate their presence and traction and partnering with companies today. That's great. Well. We're thrilled to have you in the ecosystem. Welcome. Uh, questions from the audience, the floor, anybody uh, want to, I see a hand up. <laughs> I was just wondering if you're, are you leaning towards any particular segment of the market? Like, are you looking or going after learning technology mostly, or are you leaning towards like the the stuff that helps with talent acquisition versus the stuff that might help with employee engagement? Is there a market that you're pursuing? At this point, no. And part of the reason why is actually we think that our network needs to be broad enough to be able to support all the different types of HR executives and, and former executives from uh, alumni executives uh, that, that really want to participate in it. So 
there are a lot of things that are popping up right now. Uh, it, you know, last year was the, the year of new talent acquisition startups, but this year is really pivoting massively towards talent retention, culture, a lot of different shifts in that, that area. We think that startups are going to have two, two different kinds of challenges. Ones that are not in the kind of favorable position are going to have a harder time to swim upstream to find those connections. And then two, the ones that are actually moving and, and, and there's a lot of other entrants in the space, how do they actually stand out? And so in both of those cases, we, we think that there's a way to help using uh, the wisdom that comes from these alumni to produce the, the you know, a little bit more a sharpening of their, their product market fit. So I, I don't think that there's a, a limit. We want to try to stay in the, uh, the, the future of work because that's where Bob and I have been for most of our careers. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't we don't want to go any deeper than that. We think that that's probably a good and maybe we're actually being a little foolish for day 10. Maybe in a month we, <laughs> we answer that question slightly differently. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a follow up question. If I yeah. can. Um, so and also, are you targeting vendors or um, clients that are going to serve the enterprise market or the SMB or just enterprise? OK, it, you uh, know, the, the, it's an ecosystem. And, and the, the point is, is that an exit for some startups is actually an acquisition. Mm -hmm. So you sort of have to think about this as a as not a just a, there's not a one size fits all. It's a journey, and what you have to do is help them understand where they are in the journey, what they're good at, what the gaps are, and those gaps could be capabilities, those gaps could be you know technologies, those gaps could be process, and help them address what they need to do to help them get to the next stage. Yeah, great, Christoph. You have a question, I believe. Your hands up. Yes. Um... <clears throat> I think um, there is a really big difference between um, the culture of startups and the people in behind. So if the, if you have a look at the um, Gen X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. they are completely different. Mm -hmm. And the alumni, the uh, executives, which learned to build connections 30 years ago mm -hmm. and uh, today it's a completely different story mm. and a completely different game mm -hmm. how do you manage this because i think that is quite difficult to bring someone in the ecosystem because we know all linkedin and that is not a problem at all but what is in it that this makes it easier for both party or it's not two it's it's multiple a parties. lot of it yeah. a lot of different cultures mm -hmm. to bring everyone on one place so that they love each other and and the fact is is that you can't really you know what we've learned about human behavior over the last mo several millennia is that you really can't make people love each other <laughs> you can I know you can, you can, you but can you can them. love the system you can love the you, ex, you can left that what what is possible and the offers and something like this. So the biggest challenge that really exists in all of this is that there's not a, a sort of understanding, a shared understanding among all the participants what the game is. And so part of the thing that you actually have to do is change the model so that you help create shared understanding because part of the, 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 the basis of any uh, real deeper kind of structural connection between people starts first with a shared understanding that starts usually with language, but, but that's actually the basis of all culture. Now, stepping back, how do you actually do that? You have to be really clear about what the expectations are, because oftentimes when you start up a, an advisory board, uh, what the, uh, you know, uh, what, what the, the, the startup uh, uh, entrepreneur thinks is going to happen is I'm giving you uh, some of this equity, of course, you're going to connect me to all of your connections that are going to, and I'm going to be able to make money off of that, right? Because this is a transaction and, and you're like me, we're transactional. And the person's like, hey, wait a second, I've worked 30 years to build the trust in these relationships. I'm not going to hand that off. And, and really, if you change the model so that you actually make it clearer to both parties what the actual thing is, and they both see that there's a shared outcome for both of them, 
then what you're doing is you're helping to start creating that momentum. You're not going to change all of it at once, but what you can do is start changing it by creating shared understanding. Okay. Thanks for that explanation. Yeah, I think it's complex and it will be uh, developing um, inside the system. Absolutely. And, uh, and there's not a one size fits all. And of course, some of the yeah. things that you also have to kind of pay attention to is how emotionally aware people really are. Because, and we, Bob and I have actually walked away from a couple of opportunities already. We're just like, you're not really going to be listening here. This won't work. We want to see that you, you do successfully, but our model is not going to work for you. And it, it's just sort of helping that kind of awareness uh, or being aware of <laughs> where the awareness is and uh, how to actually build some better mechanisms to help us understand where people are on their journeys. Christoph, okay. I think it also it also relates Thank to how you. people execute. So no matter how how perfect your technology is, these are all great tools, but human beings at the end of the day uh, do things by their behavior and how they execute their their life and how they execute on an agreement with you that that builds trust and that builds people liking each other or disliking each other based on how they all behaved. That has not changed since Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at great leadership models all the way through and how people communicate with each other, either with or without technology, there's something in humanness about uh, we treat each other honestly and it's uh, when we when we f do we fulfill our promises or do we not uh, mm -hmm. it's it really comes back down to human behavior our do say ratio how much we actually follow up on what we actually say you're <laughs> absolutely right andrew i couldn't agree more well that's good and you know a lot of the startups definitely need a lot of help and i hope they get it from your team because everybody will benefit from it to Andrew's point, you know, it's, you know, it could be contagious, right? Either for the good or for the bad. So let's, let's try to instill the good in everyone and um, develop the whole ecosystem. As they say, rising tide rises all boats or something like that. So um, <laughs> we're glad that you guys have set sail and we're excited for you. We're interested to hear how things are going um, towards the, uh, maybe towards the end of the year, come back and give us an update and of course until Thanks. then don't be strangers and hopefully you stay any um any closing remarks or uh something you wanted to share that you didn't get to um put out there well, i'll let bob because i talked about most of the time so bob please <laughs> yeah i would just say that if anybody would like to go connect with us um our site's up and we'd be more than happy to go and share some further insights on what we're doing and there might be some folks on this meeting right now that might be a good fit for some of the advisory work we're, we have. And also we're building a bench of fractional specialties. So we'd like to hear from all of you because there might be some opportunities in the startups we're working that need a lot of help beyond the things that we do, that we want to provide them access to peer uh, people who can provide that fractional kind of work. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good to collaborate. Um, Virtual organizations are the wave of the future, for sure. <laughs> and I, I just want to say thank you so much, Ward, for, for making this space happen and for, for uh, inviting us. And, and thank you, everyone, for, 